to war the Lord. The high glory of God in Jesus. God, I just thank you right now because you're an awesome God. You are a merciful God. You are such a caring God. You know our thoughts. You know where we are and what we're going through. And so I just thank you right now for reminding us today that you have not forgotten about us and that you're working things out for us even while we are going through whatever it is that we're wrestling with at this hour. I pray right now, God, that you would just break some chains right now. I pray that you open some doors. I pray, oh God, that you would just give liberty to as many people as you as, as needed today, oh God. That you'll use folks to be a blessing to others. I pray that you'll use this Bible study right now to uplift somebody, to encourage somebody, to motivate somebody. Oh God, to, to lead somebody to salvation. I pray that you'll use us, oh God, as your instruments at this hour. We need you right now. We've, oh God, we, we've been leaning on other folks and, and that has not worked for us. We need to lean on you every day of our lives. And so we rebuke the enemy right now and we put our faith and our hope and our trust into you. Bless your people. Bless this worship. Bless this church. And bless our journey as we seek to declare that you are the Lord. You are our Savior. And there is none other besides you. So we just thank you, even, even though, oh God, we may be in the midst of something right now, we're not going to wait until it's over before we shout and before we have joy. We're going to shout and we're going to have joy right now because we know that you're working it out for us and we're going to be better on the other side. It's in your name we do pray. Amen. Well, our series that we're in is it's a good time for a good word. Today we want to look at Elijah and how God dealt with him. And this is coming out of 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 through 14. You'll find these words printed. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we said thanks be to God. So I want to theme this time of study. He needed a word. He needed a word. There are some things in this life that will bring us down to our knees. There are some things in this world that will cause us to have some sleepless nights. There are some situations that will cause us to ball up in a fetal position and soak our pillows in tears. And for those of us who have grown up in the church, those of us who know the word of God, we run to our shelter and we know that the Lord is our shelter he is our rock and we depend on him we run to the word of God for comfort and for strength and we know that when we are 
depressed and downtrodden, that we can't stay there. Our only hope is our faith. And we know that our faith is derived, it comes from the word of God. The Bible teaches us in Romans 10 and 17 that consequently our faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Therefore, in trying times, many of us rely on the word we get from our worship on Sundays. We depend on the word on Wednesdays. We cherish the word that we get during our own personal devotion time. And it is that word that Elijah is in need of after finding himself in a depressed state. He is in need of that very same word that many of us have depended upon for many years. Let me give you a little background that leads up to our text. King Ahab has killed, executed hundreds of prophets of God. And he tells his wife Jezebel about Elijah and how Elijah is one of God's prophets and how Elijah uh, is sending out these messages of doom and gloom upon his uh, reign. And King Ahab was viewing Elijah as the problem, but Elijah was not Ahab's problem. God was Ahab's problem because Elijah was just a messenger. Hmm? Jezebel, the king's wife, had introduced idol gods, idol worship. They were involved in idolatry. And this went against everything that the Lord had told them to do. He's a jealous God. He said, thou shall have no other gods before me. But Ahab and his wife Jezebel, they didn't care anything about that. They did everything they thought they were big and bad enough to do, and they did it. And this angered God. And whenever you disobey God, there are consequences for your behavior. Watch this. Historically, God has always sent prophets to remind people about the rules before he imposes judgment against them. He gives us a chance to correct the wrong and the bad behavior. He gives us a chance. He, you know, he's, he doesn't just come in and, and, and just squash us immediately all the time, but a lot of times he's gonna give us a warning. He says, all right, now I see you. You know how your parents used to do you? I told you now, just keep it up. You got, I, I, you know, I'm gonna get you for old and new. If you just, you know, just, and so that's kind of how God operates with us. He, he gives us opportunities to correct the bad behavior. All Elijah was doing was bringing the warning to Ahab. So Jezebel, who introduced these idol gods, and this idol worship to the people, tells Elijah that he was next in line to be killed. Not next in line to be blessed, but you were, the man of God, you next in line to be killed. First Kings 19 and two reads, so Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow, I do not make your life like one of them, like one of the other prophets that we've already killed. Now, of course, this troubled Elijah. Who wouldn't be troubled? if somebody tells you that they're gonna kill you, that you're next in line to die. He hadn't done anything wrong. All he did was follow God's instructions. And nevertheless, a hit was put out on his life. It was a hit or some <clears throat> may even say that it was a contract, a, a death contract against him. And this troubled Elijah. And though we may not have had anything to happen to us like Elijah had, we've all received some bad news. We've all had some disappointments in our lives. We've all had some trials and tribulations to deal with. And if we are honest, we've all been depressed at some point in life. We've all been afraid. 
We've all had some doubts about our safety and what this, how we were going to come out of a situation. What it was going to look like on the other side. If we're honest, we've all had to, to grapple with feelings and emotions such as these. Hmm? I know a lot of these small businesses are concerned about whether they're going to survive this pandemic and what they're going to do, what it's going to look like on the other side. Some have already closed their doors permanently and they're trying to figure out what their next move is going to be. The same can be said about people who have been laid off or on the verge of being laid off. There are folks in hospitals right now with COVID-19 and they're alone and they're scared. There are people getting tough news from their doctors and they're worried about a lot of things. They're worried about what's going to happen to their children, what's going to happen to their spouse, what's going to happen to their property. Somebody has some legal trouble and the odds are against them. And they're worried and they want to run somewhere and hide from everyone. Well, that's exactly what Elijah did. The Bible tells us in 1 Kings 19, 3 through 5, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Bathsheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. Elijah went from being scared of dying. He, he's running, trying to preserve his life. He, wanted, he wasn't ready to die. He wasn't ready to leave this world. He went from all of that after Jezebel made that hit on his life. Now he has gone so far in his running until he's tired of living. He said, I'm, I'm just tired of it all. Enough. I've had enough. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I just, I, this is too much for me. He's, he's ready to give up. He said, Lord, just take my life now. Mm. He, he's ready to throw in the towel. But God saw him. But God heard his cry. How many know that we serve a merciful and compassionate God? The God we serve knows how much we can bear. Hmm? Anybody ever been in situations where you've had so much going on in your life and, and it was just one thing after another and you didn't know how you was going to make it, but God somehow brought you out of that? Come on, somebody. But Elijah, before he could awake from his nap, God had sent an angel to come to rescue him. And that's what I want to say to you right here, is that God sees all, God hears all, and God knows all, and God has not forgotten about you. Don't you give up now. Don't you quit. I know things are a little, or maybe even a lot crazy right about now. Seems like you're losing everything, but don't you throw in the towel just yet. Hold on. You ought to pull, pull out your cell phones right now and, and tell somebody uh, not to give up. Tell them that the devil may have said one thing to them, but God has the final say so, and God can override anything that the devil puts out there. Tell them that it may look dark today, but the sun will shine again. You ought to encourage somebody right now. Tell them that somehow in some way that it's going to work out for their good. God has a way of turning situations around. God has a way of, of creating doors where there seems to be no door. He has a way of shaking things up so that when it comes out, it's just all in the right place. Tell them don't give up. Tell them don't quit. 
No matter what the enemy may be saying right now, it's not over. And God has the last say. In Jeremiah 32, verse 27, I heard God ask, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? That's right, my brothers and sisters, as long as we have breath in our bodies, God is able to turn any situations around. I heard the Apostle Paul say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I, go, I got on here to tell you today that God's word will give you all the strength that you need. Did you hear what I said? His word, there is power in the word of God. There's power to help you get up, power to motivate you, power to help you keep your mind stayed on the Lord. Mm. Calm your fears. Hallelujah. Back home, we used to sing a little song, say, I believe I'll run on and see what the end will be. I believe I'll run on and see what the end will be. And the mighty clouds of joy would say, John declared, I got a long white robe waiting in heaven on me. I believe I'll run on and see what the end will be. It may get hard sometimes, we say, but I believe I'll run on anyhow and just see what the end will be. Keep on running. <laughs> Keep on running because even though it may look dark and scary right now, you don't know how it's going to turn out. If you keep moving, it's what I've discovered. If you keep walking in the Lord, he'll bless you. He will amaze you. He will blow your mind as to what he's able to do. Well, after Elijah had awakened and eaten, and verse 11 through 13 tells us the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. And how many of you know that when God shows up, something is about to happen? Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? The text says that God was not in that wind. He was not in that earthquake. God was not in that fire that came. People tend to look for God in some great sign or wonder. But God doesn't have to move in situations like that. Uh -uh. He doesn't walk around with lightning flashing and thundering, roaring all the time just to speak to us. Too often we will miss what God is saying if he comes with all of that grandiose. But in that still small voice, a quiet gentle whisper. He speaks to us. Huh? And that's what I want to tell you today. Take some time, some quiet time. Go on to your meditative state and to your quiet place, to your devotion area and spend that time with God and hear him speak to you, minister to your heart as you read and study his word. God had a word for Elijah and God's got a word for you. Don't you miss it because of all the, the grandiose. When the doctor's telling you that you got cancers, it can be hard to hear what God is saying. When they're repossessing your car, it, may, it can be hard sometimes to hear what God is saying. And when you are being laid off, sometimes it can be hard to hear what God is saying. But, but, but step away from all of that. And spend a little time, quiet time. Not in the noise, not in the ruckus. And hear what God is saying. Let me just say this too about our God. And I'm going to rush on to an end. He doesn't need a lot of fanfare to get a job done. He doesn't need the wind, doesn't need earthquakes and rumbling. He, he can quietly operate. And before you know it, you'll be looking back in wonder and in awe at how far the Lord has brought you. Mm. He, he'll do that for you. When you think about how down you were, 
but how high your position is today. It makes you want to shout, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Other folks were saying that you weren't going to survive it. Some folks were secretly hoping that you would fall and you would be destroyed so that they could have some, some new gossip to talk about. Hmm? But quietly, God showed up. He rescued you. He elevated you. He didn't let you get destroyed. Nobody gave you a chance but, but God. That's why I say you ought to tell somebody, but God, when they're in that tough situation, but God. Yeah, that would be true, but God. Yeah, you wouldn't make it, but God. Yeah, you, you know, this is an insurmountable obstacle, but God. When you say, but God, that lets us know that you, you realize that they, you have another helper. You have another source, another power to go to that's greater than anything on this earth. Or oh, when you think about the goodness of the Lord, how he nursed you and rocked you and held you in your midnight hour and, and brought you out in a better state, in a safe state. It makes you want to shout, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory, all the honor and all the praise. Get up from your depressed state. Get up and start moving to your victory place. Your dreams are not dead. Your goals are still in play. Your life is not over. Get up and get moving. Your breakthrough is right around the corner and there's nothing that you can't do today. You got the power. It's a good word for such a time as this. I don't know about you, but every day I need that word from, the God, from God. Every day in my life, I need to hear from him. I, I, I use that word to keep me in some difficult times. If I don't get that word, I'm more apt to drift from where he wants me to be. So stay in the word of God. Take time for God's word. Today is a good time to spend some time with his word. You've been down long enough. You've shed enough tears. You've been hiding out from everybody else for long enough. You can walk back on this stage of life and start giving your testimony about how good God has been to you, how he's kept your mind, how he calls you not to give up. When you wanted to give up, he told you not to give up. He told you that you got too much to live for. He told you that too many folks are going to be blessed through you and that if you stop now, you're going to mess up the plan that he has for not only you, but those around you. It's a good time to get a good word from the Lord. Keep moving, my brothers and sisters, as we walk this journey, not by sight, but by faith. God bless you until we meet again. The enemy is defeated. I'm moving.